So we're back in the read room at Tom Hardy Bassoon Reads with some warnings and caveats for people using profiling machines. This is to supplement video number seven on the series we made a couple of years ago. This is my Riga profiler. Um, if, you look, if you've already seen that video, this will make sense. Um, if you haven't, go and watch that one first. When you're using one of these profilers, they do get stiff. So you want some sort of lubricant on it. There's tiny little hole in the top where we can put some oil. If you've got some very fine oil, like key oil. There's also sprays like this, which you use for bicycles to displace moisture. It's very thin and lubricating. It's good. So a little bit of that spray will just get the arm moving smoothly. You don't want to be pushing against something which is stiff. Um, one of the main problems with these profilers is that the way the blades are made is they're a soft metal which is great for taking the cane off, but they go blunt quite quickly. So if you're doing any sort of volume and you've done two or 300 pieces of cane, don't be surprised if when you look at the blade and you take it out, there's a, a bow in the blade. So if your results are not what they were a few months ago, it's time to check your blade, very important. Um, but if you've got a new blade in there or a sharpened blade, you can send them five at a time to Riga and they'll give you a discount or just one at a time and you will sharpen them. Um, makes a huge difference. So once you've got your blade in there, I'm going to show you some of the other things I've found people running into with the profiler. As you've seen on video seven, we lay the cane onto the easel and we line it up as evenly as possible. And we tighten the grip. Now, if you've got this machine set up correctly, the middle of the cane is going to be in the right place and the shoulder is going to be in the right place for what you want and the blade is going to pick up the cane in a way that you want and you're going to get up with a very nicely profiled piece of cane. It only takes one of those things to be slightly out of alignment and it all goes pear-shaped. So I am going to score one side of the shoulder first and I'm going to score the middle line. And my blade is set up so that when I push into the cane, it really is picking up right next to the shoulder, which makes a big difference. Because otherwise you end up with a big lump there. You've profiled the cane and then you've got to cut a shoulder with a knife and that takes time. And it's one more place to make mistakes. I've soaked this for about half an hour in warm water. I've found some people soaking it overnight. It can end up too soft because it's just very, very waterlogged. So if you've soaked it too long, feel free to just to take it out of the water and let it dry out a little bit. And if you haven't soaked it enough, don't be surprised if it's really hard work. Now, as I showed you on video seven, we, we keep turning this cane around. If you don't keep turning this cane around, you end up with a big sort of ridge in the middle, which you can't get out. So I've only done a couple of passes, one or two, and taken off that first layer. And this is the layer that does the most damage to your blade because this is the hard outer surface of the cane. So once you've got that outer layer off and you're not pushing that hard, that's when you want to turn the profiler around. You don't want to try and finish one side. So we've got a nice soaked piece of cane. We keep turning it around. We've got our end set correctly, which I'm going to show you a little bit more in a minute. And we're going to do what we did before. We're going to go backwards and forwards until we've got all the cane off that we need. So don't hurry it. And like I said, we, we want this shoulder to be a nice clean line. And if that's set correctly, this, this does it for you. So we're going to go back and forth, back and forth until there's no cane coming off. If you find you've suddenly dug in and you've moved your left hand too fast, this is the next big warning. So you're doing this and you, you start to move this left arm too quickly. Although there's a template, theoretically you couldn't dig more cane off than the template allows you to, but somehow the blade lifts into the cane more fibers than you'd want and you, you can end up with a bit of a hole. So if you watch my left hand's going pretty slowly and my right hand's going quite fast. 
and I'm very much using a sort of woodworking movement. It's a horizontal, even movement with a flow to it. It's not jerky. I'm not pushing down on the cane. That will make my knife, my blade last a lot longer too. So once we've finished this piece of cane, we're getting close. We've got this slight ridge because I've been talking to you instead of paying attention. But I'm going to do a few more passes and it should all come off. So now, now I'm making sure this blade has no stuff in it. And I'm now going to push a little bit harder because I've got through the outer surface. And I'm especially going to make sure I'm going right to the middle. I'm not stopping short. And I'm going push and then I'm lifting as I come back. I'm not just dragging the blade across the, the cane because the cane's very blunting for the blade. So if your middle line isn't set exactly right, you will find you end up with a big ridge of material here that just doesn't come off. But mine is actually comes off with my finger. So that's good enough. So now if I take this off, the middle line should be good enough that I'll be able to fold it over and it will fold on the middle line. Because if I haven't folded, if I haven't done that correctly, then it just makes a mess. So that's some of the warnings for the profile. I'm just going to show you a little bit more about the blades. I've got various blades that I have used that have come from Mr. Riga and they're just a little bit blunt now. They're not sharp to the touch. Um, it's not very nice to watch this, but if I can scrape a bit of fingernail off, I know it's very sharp. So I want this blade set so that if I took a piece of cane upside down and pushed it on the blade just a little bit, that it would take the tiniest nick out. That's going to be our chip size. That's how much is coming off in one go. If the blade is sticking out more than a hair, and I really do mean a fraction, I put a ruler next to it, it's, it's hardly, I mean I can feel it with my thumb there, it's just sticking up a little bit proud so that it pulls the cane. If it's slight, out slightly too far, you will shred the cane and you'll wonder what, why you're not getting results. And one of the most distressing things about this is that when we change the blade, we take off the handle and we unscrew this and we take the blade out, that none of these blades are quite the same length. So you put the new blade in the housing and it's sticking out a different distance. So it's not a quick fix. You can, don't do it when you're just about to make your next batch of reeds or if you want the family to be talking to you because that setting of the blade is vital. Um, and without that, it's all a mess. One other warning is with these arms. There's quite a lot of different settings you can have on these because there's a screw here which we can change to change the height. There's a little nut and a screw. So obviously if they're set too low, you can actually chop right through the cane and get that result even if the cane's wet. If they're set too high, you can end up with a big bump where you can't get the cane out in the middle. So it just needs to be set to, to a level where it's cutting into the cane but not chopping through it. And the same with the shoulder. If the shoulder one is set so that you push it hard, and you actually cut the edge of the cane, you'll end up with a reed with a sort of wing sticking up where it will leak at the back and that's impossible to fix. So the setting of these two arms is one other vital thing. So that's the Riga Profiler do's and don'ts and that's to supplement video number seven. I hope that helps.